Greetings and salutations and this is Tech Renaud here, back with more Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. And my schedule's kind of shif shifting up. It was originally going to be two Spyro videos a week and one video of this a week, but this Let's Play is much longer than my Spyro one's going to end up being, so I decided to switch it up. We're now doing two videos this week and one video of Spyro. Unfortunately, I had edited videos together before like ahead of time so I wasn't able to like do the schedule switch up from the beginning like I kind of wish I was you know but you know it's fine citizens of the various it's city. fine it's whatever this dude is the it's whatever of the dude. Whoa, dude this is the voice I love of the I'm sorry, I know skipping marks in the 20 in the 2016 Ratchet Clank remake was annoying as fuck, but that's probably the only line he has where like I actually laugh because it's like, use the promo code. Whoa, dude! Like that, <laughs> that made me laugh. The, the remake has a joke here and there that lands in between a bunch of cringe ones. Fortunately. A lot of the humor in Rift Apart lands. There's one joke that I didn't like, but I wouldn't call it cringe because like it didn't make me cringe. Well, even some of the humor in the 2016 game did. So yeah. I'm sorry, but hashtag Gadgetron still gets on my nerves. Like that is the worst joke I've ever heard. I'd rather I'd rather hear people make incredibly dark jokes that go too far than that. Like offensive dark jokes than that. Okay, right, maybe that's too far. Maybe not offensive ones. <laughs> because those are the worst kind of jokes overall. But yeah, we are here. Let's get it. Um, while I'm doing commentary, I need to think of what song of the day is going to be. So I will be doing that. We are blasting these guys with the... Uh, this shotgun weapon, the... I forget what it's called. Because I'm used to the upgraded name now, which is the Executioner. I forget what the weapon's original name is called. So I'm sorry about that, but... Yeah, we'll be getting the song of the day soon, so... Be patient, be patient. Be patient. Okay, today's song of the day is uh, This Will Be The Day by Jeff Williams and Casey Lee Williams, which is the main theme of Volume 1 of Ruby. They see you with small... Okay, I'm going to do it after the cutscene. Would you learn how to Looks like I touched a nerve. All right, deal's a deal. That's Glitch. She'll help you get onto the Emperor's private shuttle to the tower. <laughs> Access consoles in that huge statue of Nefarious in the center of the city. Just hook her up, and she'll handle the rest. What are you doing? Tearing this whole rotten world down from the inside. Huh? <laughs> Stay strong, brother! They see you as small and helpless. They see you as just a child. Come to find out that a warrior will soon run wild. Prepare for your greatest moment. Prepare for your finest hour. The dream that you've always dreamed is suddenly about to flower. We are lightning. Straying from the thunder. Miracles of ancient wonder. This will be the day we waited for. This will be the day we open up the door. I don't want to hear your ass solution. Hope you're ready for a revolution. Welcome to a world of new solutions. Welcome to a world of bloody evolution. In time, your heart will open minds. A story will be told. And victory is in a simple soul. I'm not going to sing the second verse. I know the lyrics to all of it, but I'm not going to sing the second verse. I think that's enough. I don't want to annoy people, you know? 
<laughs> but yeah, let's get it, let's get it, let's get it good. Let's get this. Okay, we got it. Now let's use this Veritanium. Veritanium. I will admit there is a cut right there because I did do the side mission of going to get the info bot from the factory. I did do that side mission, but I didn't, um, I didn't want to keep it in. Because, you gotta keep in mind, this Let's Play, I have a total of 20 videos worth of footage for, so anytime I can cut out a good bit of footage and, like, lower the video count for this Let's Play, I will. Until it gets down to, like, 15, because I'm not gonna make this a really short Let's Play. I just want to like narrow it down a little bit, you know, because 20 is a bit much. Right now, due to me doing that, this is going to be a 19 part let's play, and I'm fine with that. I'd want to get it down to 18 or 17, possibly, but 19, I'm fine with it. I'm chill with that. I'm cool with that. Okay, no, we're not doing another song. And I'm talking over this cutscene because I don't give a fuck about these juggernauts. These guys are fun to fight later on, but the first time you fight this guy, he's a little bitch. That's what he is, he's a little bitch. Or I guess little shit is more like it. Little bitch implies that he's like weak. Little shit means that he's annoying. Or no, little bitch doesn't imply he's weak, it more so just implies that like I I don't really know. It just doesn't mean what I'm going for, you know? Because a bitch is a female dog, and dogs are not really weak, to be honest. Dogs are stronger than us most of the time. Especially, like, willpower-wise. Like, they got more willpower and stubbornness than I think any human I've ever met, which is a good thing. It's a good thing in their case. So yeah, I don't count this as a boss fight. Um, I think there's only five bosses in the game, technically speaking. There's the nefarious boss that we fought last video. Or was it last video? No. There's the nefarious boss we fought in the first video. Then there's a boss we're gonna be fighting, I think, in the next video. And then there's like three other bosses. I don't count the Juggernaut as a boss, because this is the only time he feels like a boss fight. And he shows up as like a regular enemy later on, so I don't count him as a boss fight at all. I really don't. Especially because, technically speaking, he didn't take long to beat at all. But yeah, I'm going to shut up because of cutscene. Yeah, hi. You must be Glitch. I'm Ratchet. Sorry for all the jostling around earlier. Things aren't exactly going well, and... Actually... I think you're the only one who can help me right now. Thanks. Now, this is, uh, probably the only weak point of the game to me, and that's the glitch seconds, sections. And don't get me wrong, I don't remember if I do the first two, or if I just do the first one and skip the rest of them, but the first, I think I do the first two, honestly. The first couple glitch sections, or maybe the first three, I don't know how many I do before I start skipping them. But I know for a fact I did the first two at this point, like I'm pretty sure I did. The first couple glitch sections are really fun, but then after that they kind of get ridiculous, and that's like why I start skipping them. I skipped some of the clank sections later on too, but uh, that's only because of impatience. That's not really me not liking it. That's just impatience. No. But yeah, I think I do do three of these before I start skipping them. But I don't know for sure if I did the third one. I'm just going to say I do, did two. Because I know for sure I did two of these before I start skipping them. But yeah. I like Glitch's character. She got an adorable voice. I know her arc in the story is it's really good. I like her. But her gameplay is a different story. 
It's not really her gameplay. The way she plays is fine. It's like the way it's designed later on. It's a bit annoying. And I don't really like associate difficult gameplay design with annoying. I'm more so that's more so just a challenge, but I when I call gameplay annoying, it's when it's like not when it's hard, but when it's annoying, you know, like when it annoys you. Here we go. I'm the Emperor. How about I obliterate you instead? Ha 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 ha. Dimensionator was stolen by Dr. Nefarious, who used it to bring you here? Now you just have to find your friend, who is also miraculously a Lombax, to save the day. And get home. <laughs> you must seriously think I'm an idiot. Look, as real as I'm sure this Dr. Nefarious is, this has the Emperor written all over it. Help! We under attack! Anyone? Mort? What's going on? <gasps> oh dear. Race for impact! Oh. Look out! What do you think I'm doing? Go! Elsewhere with Rivet and Clank, uh, I love Rivet. I really do. Rivet is... <laughs> She's not my favorite Ratchet and Clank character. That's definitely Dr. Nefarious. That's why, like, I def I think I mentioned in one of the last... I don't know if it was the last video or if it was the first video. But I think I mentioned that, like, I don't mind how often Nefarious appears. I don't think he should have been in the 2016 game. But aside from that, I don't like how often he appears. Or not... I don't like... I don't mind how often he appears because I like the fairies and he's technically the series main main antagonist so him appearing at least once every few games is fine if you don't count the 2016 game he only really appears like once every three or so games like he appears in the third game of the series then he's absent for deadlock he's absent for the first two future games and then he returns so he, we went three games without him. I know he gets a cameo in Deadlock, but I don't count that. You go three games without him, he comes back. And yes, he comes back again right after in All for One. But after All for One, he's absent for two more games. And then he comes back in this game. I don't think he shows up too much. I don't. I really don't. Especially since this game and All for One came out 11 years apart. And if you don't, and I'm not counting the 2016 game because it's not part of that timeline. That's like its old timeline, you know. This wasn't what was in my account last time. Oh, that is because I added 
it our but yeah. mutual friend on Nefarious City. Okay. <sighs> Go ahead. Upgrade that. We got Mr. F the Negatron Collider. That's one of my favorite weapons. I think we just got that. The other one is the topiary, whatever it's called, but we don't get it yet. But we got one of my favorite weapons. The Negatron Collider. That it, that weapon is a beast. I think it's the first weapon I maxed out to. I'm almost certain it is. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. But I'm almost certain it's the first gun I maxed out. Because of how much I love using it. Now, I don't get the Rhino and stuff in this last play. Spoiler alert, I don't do all that. I go back for that. In my own time, I, I do have the Rhino and I am playing New Game Plus now. I also have all the gold bolts and all the info, not info bots. I want to call them info bots because they look like the info bots. But I got all the spy bots. I got everything in the game. I just didn't get it in the Let's Play. I got it in post or between videos. You know? Because there were several moments I took a break from Let's Playing the game and went off to do side things. I do it twice during this let's play. The first time it happens is actually, I think, two or three videos from now. And then the second time it happens is like, shortly before the final boss. Like it's a couple, a few videos before the final boss. So I do go a long time without doing side content in this game. And if you include the uh, spy bot I went off to the side to get, then that's three times that I did that, but I don't count that because that only took me like 12 minutes to do. It was a really short side mission. But yeah, I do have everything in the game, but I am playing New Game Plus. I also have the Bouncer and Pixelizer, which for some reason you can't get until New Game Plus, which doesn't make much sense to me, but you know what? I'm not going to complain. I'm not going to complain. That's, it's, this game is actually my first time experiencing the Bouncer. Because I didn't pre-order the 2016 game. And I never played the original game the Bouncer was in. So this game is the first time I get to experience it. It's pretty fun to use, I won't lie. I get why people like it. I do think... I don't think this game should have brought back the Pixelizer. I think it should have brought back something else. But you know what? It's fine. It's whatever. I don't mind it. The Pixelizer is a decent weapon. It's not one of the weapons I hate using, but... I, there are better weapons they could have picked, because, yeah, spoiler alert, the returning weapons for this game are Warmonger, Buzzblades, uh, Glove of Doom, the Pixelizer, the Bounce, and the Bouncer. I was going to say the Rhino 8, but the Rhino 8, I think, is the new Rhino, because when you think about it, you get, uh, I think, I'm pretty sure it is. I want to look it up. I want to look it up. Um, because... The first three Wretched and Clay games had rat, uh, the Rhinos 1 through 3. Then, um, Tools of Destruction had Rhino 4. Uh, Kraken Time had Rhino 5. Rhino 6, I believe, was in uh, All for One. And Rhino 7 was in the, into the Nexus. But I gotta look it up. I will say, the Rhino in this game is a beast. I, I don't know if it's an unpopular opinion, but I feel like it probably will be because of the way it works. The Rhino in this game is better than the previous Rhinos. It really is. Like, I haven't experienced all the Rhinos, but I used the one in Tools of Destruction in a Kraken Tie. If it wasn't a Kraken Tie, I don't remember. I know it was in Tools of Destruction. Let me look it up. Rhino. Let me see. Right, so you click, you got the Rhino.
No, I want to see the Rhino series, not the original Rhino weapon. Here we go, the history of the Rhino and Ratchet and Clank. Sorry, but I gotta look this up for my old curiosity. For my old curiosity. Okay. Okay, Growing Commando had Rhino 2, I was right about that. <laughs> Up your arsenal had the Rhino 3. Tools of Destruction have Rhino 4. Crack and Time was Rhino 5. Get away from this acid. Come on, Maynard. Let's find the morts. Um, Overwhelm was the Rhino 4 proto suit. <laughs> Into Nexus had the Rhino 7. What was Rhino 6? Oh well, it doesn't matter. I was right. This this is the first game the Rhino <laughs> ate the peers in. That's all I needed to know. Because <coughs> eventually the Nexus had the Rhino 7. And this is the Rhino 8. I'm actually really glad this game decided to go along the original timeline. Because I know that the future series of the original trilogy doesn't really connect fully. But this game kind of confirms that they're going, that they're in the same universe. They're in the same timeline. So technically speaking, there are now, um, let me see. I believe All for One is canon. I think. Don't know if it is, but I think, I think it's canon because I believe the Ferris does have this, no, Crack and Tire's got this Crack, not All for One. Um, I believe it's canon because he has this Crack from a Crack and Tire. Even though it being canon or not really doesn't change much, because the only thing that happens in that game of See, importance is Nefarious Ryan. having a seemingly Whatever, Bolts. A, like having a fake out redemption art, where at the end of the game he goes back to being evil. Hey. Which, let's be honest, who didn't expect that? But yeah, that's the only thing of importance that happens in that game at all. Like all for one's plot is not important to the overarching story. Technically speaking, there are a few games in the mainline series that's not really important to the overall story when you really think about it. Like, the original Ratchet and Clank obviously is. Ratchet and Clank 2 and 3 are really important because they uh, Ratchet and Clank 3 introduces Dr. Nefarious, the series band antagonist, and then uh, Ratchet and Clank 2 and 3 both are part of Quark's character development. So they're both really important. Then a tool of destruction and a crack in time are really important because of the re reveals they have about Clank and Ratchet, which both carry carry uh, over into this game <laughs> in some ways. We were worried about you. Next thing we know, you're here saving our behinds. Wait, where are the others? Well, oh, some of the morts are stuck inside of that mess there. Not a clue what it is. All I know is it keeps getting bigger. Oh, between that and our new neighbor up there, we are not doing too fine. <sighs> Don't worry, I'll take care of it. Oh, and to keep you all busy while I'm gone, got this at Zerkey's. Mort can finally fix that ship she's been working on. Zerkey's? Oh, those pirates didn't give you any trouble, did they? Eh, only a little. You can give this to Mort yourself once you get her from that purple mess over there. Yeah, as I was saying, I 
stop talking for the cutscene. I'm sorry, my throat is really scratchy right now. I don't know what to do about it. But, um, yeah, as I was saying before, um, the tools of destruction and a cracky tire are really important to the story because of the real reveals they have about Ratchet and Clank's uh, origins. You know, like the Lombaxes, their secret, the Dimensionizer, uh, Clank being created by the guardian the former guardian of the great clock the great clock the, and the lumbaxes are both mentioned in this game along with clank's previous like dimension traveling and in, into the nexus which is mentioned in one of these cutscenes i'm gonna talk over these cutscenes because they don't matter to me much i'm sorry they're not really important to me so i'm gonna talk over these kind of cutscenes but yeah uh the, all that stuff is referenced, so obviously the, those games have important things for the main timeline. Uh, Quest for Booty is kind of just like an epilogue. It feels like an epilogue to um, Tools of Destruction, in a way. Where like you get like somewhat of a cliffhanger ending with Nefarious being revealed to have Clank. And then, um, a hero who could for you. but aside from that, there's like Your really nothing important father, going on I that game. So that's Your the first example father. of a game in the mainline series not really be being too important. Into the Nexus is the like next one because the only thing the that r it really like you know how to fix the, the only thing in, into the Nexus the that was important was Clank being able to travel into an alternate dimension which is brought back here and that's the only reason it's kind of important there's also a line in this game sorry if you hear me messing with something i'm trying to close something there's also a line in this game that like where where rivets like i don't know if we got to that part yet but rivets like i wish you had a jetpack and then clakes like yeah me too and then like to me, I feel like that's an inside joke because canonically, Clay has had a jetpack twice, I believe, or it might be once. I think, I think, no, I think it's once because I think it only happened in Into the Nexus in the mainline series. But it's it's really funny that 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 the like to me that if that's meant as a joke, it's funny because it basically. <laughs> Sorry. I saw it again, but it basically Our like jokes about how like Clank has canonically had a jetpack before, but he can't use it here. Something like that's the thing that's kind of always happened with the series between games. Like there's certain like upgrades and weapons and stuff that don't come back for the next game, and you're wondering, do they just like ditch these things? Because Clank has his hella pack in this game, but he doesn't have um. He doesn't have the uh, upgrade to the Hello Pack, which he's gotten multiple times in the mainline series, I believe. Just a I know he, like, I think it's called a Thruster Pack. I know he got it in the original Ratchet and Clank, but I think it happened at least once or twice after that. It didn't really happen in a crack in time. I know he didn't get that upgrade there, but it's weird that he's gotten that upgrade multiple times, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I threw those in wrong, but it's funny that he's got those upgrade multiple times. Or that upgrade multiple times, and it doesn't come back. And it's funny that Ratchet has to repurchase certain weapons he's had before. Like, you'd think they'd, like, start you out in the game with a couple weapons from the past, and then, like, give you new weapons over time. Like, maybe start you out with two or three old weapons that Ratchet has from the last adventure. You know, like, it would have been cool. I think they should do that for future games, honestly. That'd be interesting. It would have been cool if Ratchet, like, if they chose, like, three weapons that Ratchet had in, um, Into the Nexus. Whether they were new to that game or they were returning, it doesn't matter. Choose three weapons he had Into the Nexus. And start him out with those, but then he gets, like, different weapons in the game. I think that would have been interesting. And it might, I think it would be really interesting for a future game. Like, maybe bring back, like, the topiary weapon. Um, maybe bring back the topiary weapon, the basic pistol, and, um, maybe the Necatron Collider or whatever that thing is called. 
a weapon I love. Maybe bring back those three. And then, like, in the next game, and just have Ratchet, the rest of Ratchet web, Ratchet's weapons be new. That would be interesting. And it would add more continuity to the series. And it's funny that Clank always loses his upgrades, but Ratchet almost always keeps the Magna Boots, the Grind Boots, basically every upgrade he's ever gotten. Except for the Hover Boots, apparently. Even though I'm pretty sure the Hover Boots return into the Nexus, I don't know for sure, but I think they do. I'm pretty sure the Hover Boots return into the Nexus after a crack in time. And then you don't have them here from the beginning. I want to look it up, though. I want to fact check. I, I got to fact check myself again because I don't want to give misinformation. I got to fact check myself. I wonder if I will be able to solve all of this in the end. Because I haven't played any of these games in like years. Because I haven't had access to them since PS3. Hover boots, Ratchet and Clank. Um. In times of great stress, which seems to be every day of my life. Yeah, they did appear in Into the Nexus. To take things one step at a time. Focus on what's in front of Oh, they appeared in Full Frontal Assault, too. Hover boots were used by Ratchet as well as Clank and Quark as Q-Force members throughout their adventure, okay. And before the Nexus, the hover boots were used as an alternative to the grind rails. Ratchet used them whenever he left the grind rail. Into the Nexus, Ratchet lost his hover boots when the Nebulox 7 prison ship is destroyed. The smuggler later returned them to him on... Planet Thram, or Planet Thram, in exchange for a, gar a Gargathon uh, horns. Okay, that's a missed opportunity. If they would have kept it as Ratchet, I know I'm talking over cutscene, I don't care. If they would have kept it as Ratchet losing his hover boots in that game, then the continuity would have made more sense. But as it stands, it just seems like they threw him into this game. And later on, he has like the the O2 mask, something he didn't really use since the classic games, I don't think. I don't think he's used that since the classic games. He thinks to bring that, but doesn't think to bring his hover boots, which are a more recent addition to his arsenal of gadgets, so that's weird. But anyways, I am going to end off the video here, so bye! See ya! Game over!